The Xiaomi Pocophone F1. Xiaomi's answer to a flagship killer, killer. Google Pixel 3 on a budget. All the hyperboles that you guys could ask for device. Uh, you guys have been asking me to go ahead and review the Pixel experience ROM, and that's what we're gonna do in today's video. Hey, my name is Mitchell. If you're new to my channel, I make videos about the tech I use. And before we start talking about the Pixel experience ROM on the Poco F1, I wanna go ahead and thank everyone that uses my affiliate links in the description down below. Without your continued support, it wouldn't allow me to do things like review the Pixel experience ROM or review the Xiaomi Mi 9. If you guys wanna go ahead and talk to me in my my telegram community down below. I'll have a link for that. I love connecting with you guys on telegram and I do everything I can to help out and answer people's questions. Okay, enough talking, let's hop into the video. Okay, so here we have the Pixel Experience ROM. I'm gonna go through, show you guys the features that it has. Uh, and the first thing that we can do is go ahead and hop into some of the settings. And as you can see, we have essentially the same settings that you would have in a Pixel. Shocking. The digital well-built uh, being, um, it has all of the features, the wind down, the dashboard, manage notifications, etc. And it works fine. We have the accessibility settings, everything. Personally, not a fan of like this weird animation-y like icons I, I don't know how else to explain them that's that's just a personal thing uh, storage everything works totally fine as it would on this pokephone f1 if it was stock uh in regards to battery life i was getting about uh, i i have i switched my sim card out last night from my xiaomi mi 9 and i'll have more videos about the xiaomi mi 9 up here but battery life i'm getting about five and a half hours uh, with music playing a lot of the time, usually stored offline music, about half the time on mobile network, half the time off no mobile network. Into kind of the apps, the, the stuff that I'm using on here. And this, I don't, I, I'm really not a fan of like the gesture and the navigation of it. Air quality index, I have the Google calendar, which is great Google clock. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, for the alarms on Google clock, you can go ahead and have it play a playlist off of Spotify so you can wake up to some music every day. I, one of my favorite features on it, I've talked about before. All of these apps are just the stock Google apps. This is for the online teaching I do. As you guys can see, I have Franco Kernel installed. Battery Life Lab is what I've done for it. Underclock the CPU. Power saving profile, I have uh, I have it on the power saving one. Lower max brightness, this one's helped a lot. Uh, I've noticed that the Pocophone F1 would give me much, much better battery life with the screen turned down more. Uh, nap time, I do have nap time installed on here to get me better battery life. For performance profiles, I noticed that when I was on power savings, and I would use the Google Gcam port, I would get kind of hiccupy performance. So what you can do is go ahead and create uh, per app profiles. And as you can see, I went and I added the Gcam app. So the phone runs at a higher clock speed when using that app. Gets you better performance, makes the photo taking experience more enjoyable. Display controls, I would notice every time I restarted the phone, I would have issues with the display controls. I got, got a feeling that has to do something with Franco kernel. Instagram, grab, GSAM, battery stats. Uh, as you can say, average about five, five and a half hours. It says it's a little closer to six. Um, I would say usually it's closer to five and a half, depending upon if it's on Wi-Fi or not. Xiaomi Mi Home. I'm gonna have some videos coming about the home automation stuff that I have going on here because I have uh, five or six smart lights and a smart air home purifier. Uh, Reddit, where I have stuff, the Yi Light app, and now recently the Google Home app allows for you to change the color of the lights in your room which is great. Uh, keep in mind, guys, the performance that you're seeing, and, and a lot of this has to do with the fact that I have underclocked everything. It is all slower in Franco kernel, and so the fact that it runs this smoothly 
with all of those settings and all that stuff turned down, I think is really, really a testament to how efficient the ROM is. Here is the multitasking, and this is probably my biggest, least favorite thing on stock Android. I know that there's the ways to get around this. I'm not going through the hassle of doing it, and ultimately, I am going to be going back to uh, MIUI or Xiaomi EU ROM on this phone. Part of that is because my girlfriend will probably be switching to a Xiaomi device. She's probably gonna be getting this bad boy. She's probably gonna be getting my Mi 9. Uh, well, she bought the Mi 9, but uh, she's probably gonna be getting this. And so um, to get her kind of started moving over, I'm gonna run the Xiaomi EU ROM back on the Pocophone. And then when it comes time for her to switch, I can just reset the Mi 9. Uh, we're waiting to get uh, Xiaomi EU ROM on the Mi 9. Uh, just because right now the software is probably my least enjoyable or my least favorite part of the Mi 9. Um, but I just, I think that the multitasking on MIUI is a lot, lot cleaner. It's, I like it a lot more than the this half swipe up. Um, I also like the quick change in between apps. And as you guys can see, I am running the Poco Launcher on my Mi 9. I feel like it makes it a little bit faster. One thing that you guys might be wondering is what is the stock camera app on Pixel Experience? And it is the stock Pixel camera, of course. And unfortunately, one of the things that we don't get is 4K60. And we now have 4K60 on the uh, Xiaomi EU ROM with the ANX camera. So that's kind of a bummer. Uh, it's definitely kind of a bummer, but um, the uh, the performance of the G cam built into this ROM is great uh, and it's really, really quick. Uh, back up top. Now, as you guys can see, the Google Pixel Experience ROM is runs great. It runs super, super smooth. It runs really, really seamless. On the Poco F1, uh, there haven't been many problems with it. Battery life has been about five and a half hours or so, which is pretty solid. Um, but as I kind of talked about, I'm just not a big fan of stock Android or of this completely stock sterile version of Android. Um, in a lot of ways, I really, really like what I have with MIUI, it runs a little bit heavier, but you get some more optimizations. I think maybe I would prefer Oxygen OS, but I know that the development on it has been slowed down quite a bit because one of the lead developers uh, decided to like leave the project. I know that they're still working on it, but um, it seems like updates for it are, are coming out a little slow. Overall, you know, my thing is if, 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 you, for some reason, love stock Android, or if there's something, if there's a specific feature that you have in stock Android that you can't get from like a, a MIUI based ROM, uh, then I, I totally understand. Um, you know, for example, uh, on my Xiaomi Mi Pad 4, uh, which I have the Xiaomi EU ROM on, uh, I do not have uh, the smart trusted devices Wi-Fi unlocking, which is basically if my tablet's connected to the Wi-Fi, it doesn't lock. Um, so that when I take it out of the house, the screen locks. That would be really, really convenient. That's not available uh, in the MIUI build that's on that. And that's kind of annoying. But in regards to like stuff on the, the Pixel Experience ROM, um, it's just not really my cup of tea. It doesn't have a lot of character. It doesn't really have a lot of, uh, it doesn't really have a lot of features that just kind of pull me back into wanting to use the Pixel Experience ROM. And with kind of my dislike for the gestures uh, and like the fact that I still have kind of a navigation bar on the bottom of the screen, uh, I, I miss having the full screen Xiaomi gestures, to be completely honest. And I don't wanna have to go through side loading stuff or having to do command line prompt stuff on my computer. I, I know that's available with the XDA developer app. I know I'd be able to do it. I just, for, for someone like myself, it's just not what I care to do. It's not what I care to you know put my time into. 
But overall, if you are looking for a pixel type experience for your device, uh, go ahead and and do it. Go ahead and uh, and, and use it. it. It runs really well. It runs really without much in the way of hiccups. I hope that this gives you guys a little bit of insight into what using the Pixel Experience ROM is like, uh, whether or not it's something that you're interested in, and uh, the performance that you can expect out of it. Okay, until next time, guys, it's been Mitchell coming to you from Hanoi. And if you guys want to see more videos about what life here in Vietnam is like, go ahead and check out my other YouTube channel here at the end of it. Uh, I know some people like to see some of the wild stuff we do over here. Okay, till next time, guys, it's been Mitchell. Peace.